Uh, we have been using Scratch for years at, in game creation, and now this kind of applies Scratch to real life. It's definitely a lot more different when you see something working and being able to control it on like your own floor than it is being able to see it on a screen. It's a level up from what we've been doing and it allows you to see what you've done in a, a real life situation. You can't use shape. You, you can't can use space? Shape. No. Space starts it. How about B for break? How about the space bar? No, uh, because space bar you know starts you play, you play with these three fingers, right? And then you have these two. Yeah, here, what if we have shift if we and put zero. ten ifs in? We can have zero be in break and yeah. shift be. No, how, how does zero work? When you Zero's play like this. Oh yeah, zero and then how about C? C is underneath. Or how about B? B, 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 B break. Yeah. This is where the operators come. No, it's no, wait, it's no. motion. motion. So the first one is a hundred and a hundred. Yeah. Add it to every single one except the two breaks. Stop. 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 Um, slight problem. How do I get this to stop? Hit the stop button. I did. I, I got this. I got go to motion. Go to motion. I'm trying. That's yours, Jake. Jake, press Q. Press no. Q. Abort. Q. No, no. You have to put a stop finch on as well. Not stop all. Stop. Get the stop finch and click it. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm keeping that right there. Stop is for, that's for breaking. Really I thought this too. Breaking. Just add, move, finch, left, right to every single one except the last two. How do I copy again? Right click, I think. Uh, it's different on this. That Jake. I told you. Don't I was going to copy button. it and it was going to be so much easier. All right? Okay, did I say anything? I should not. I don't think so. I, so, I got scared for a second. All right, so uh, let's add zero, zero, a hundred, a hundred, and then oh, the last two are stop finch because those are the break buttons. Oh yeah, yes. Oh, I'm wrong. We have to add one more thing to the end of this. What do we gotta put? We have to add something so you can stop Q. the script. Quit. All right, Almost yeah, done that's here. actually good. And let's then put stop up. finch and st uh, put a stop script, but not stop all. Keep up the pace. Okay. All right, so and we have that now. To go left, you let's need just make sure it works. Right. So Hit I'm going to fly down. Let's see if this works. Get ready. Hey. Get ready. We are working. Try the break button now. Try the big break button now. What did I do wrong? You know what didn't do anything. Break button work. Now it's turning. Is it turning well? There you yeah, go. mine works well. The motion. We made it move left and right, and we couldn't figure that out at first. But then we can make it move left, right, and then finally back. All right, now let's do the colors. Uh, we've been trying to program the finch to move around, and we found it can change color, go different directions, and like make what sounds. What should be color? C is for color. C is for color. Think of something. I'm gonna do. I'm just doing red, like... green. Big, the bigger the number, the more the change Blue. of the color. Wow. Yeah, it does. It Good colors. Do you know about variables? Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to make a variable up here above the forever. Yeah. Okay. Um, and i got to give it a name. Okay, yeah. so it's a local variable. Make it for this right only, Jake. Remember. I did. Does it know this one yet? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to grab this and drop it in here. I'm going to let you do the rest of these because I can see that you're much faster with this right hand. Then all you need to do is set it, just set, set it there yeah, it's and it'll just cascade through yeah. all of them. Okay. Yeah. It's, the, it's the power of algebra. Yeah. Oh, God. Dale, you and I know the power of yeah, algebra. Yeah, uh, algebra. Well. Let's help you figure out what the light sensors do. Oh, light sensor. The sensors are like two. Oh, th these are what these are. This is a are these what more, they are? Uh, that was more out basic. of our comfort yeah. zone, Dale. Okay. Well, that's how you have. You to got light watch. sensor going on over here? Yeah. Basically, he got it so that what a silver light sensor. No. Look at that. When it's up. Be oh yes, that's a good idea, okay. Jake. Yeah, this orientation. So all oh, I, I have equals. Equals. Oh, oh god, this is fun. orientation is identical Wait, to still finally admitting he needs my help. Ready? So it's red, green, red, in between green, red, green. Yes, yes. Let's go. Right. right before we finished, we also figured out an orientation thing. So I thought that was the coolest part. So it can actually sense which way it's pointing. We're trying it's pointing to prove that, like, when it goes through the obstacle course, there's a certain setting called finch orientation, which lets allows us to see that the finch can tell if it's upside down or how it's positioned. This program and it that operates a robot, which we call the finch. There's a lot and of things that you can do 
uh, on this that you couldn't and do in Scratch. It's a lot more experimenting that you have to do with this. So it's a lot more of a trial and error. And today, we, what we mainly worked on was working with the different the operatives. The thing I discovered was when I was um, working on the finch. turn when it sees an object. Like a turn when it sees not a lot of light. Because everyone in the room seemed to be interested and like wanted to see what it was. And it was it's something new to our school because no one has ever seen this before. It would be good as like an elective. I think it's kind of cool because you're taking what you learned in Scratch and basically putting it into life. I think life. it's cool because you can see like your games like come to Let's life. forward from here. Why is it basically this to be so I can hold it up. Circles right over. It works for me. Mike, what's your Venn diagram? And then you press, you do forever. I'm guessing. Wow. I feel so proud. So now, what do you want to, what do you want to have to press for it to go down? G. Okay. Then go to sen no, not the sensing, but oh. click on space. Now I'm gonna point in the direction, drag it, switch to 90. Now. Wow. Oh, I did. Press G to make it do that again. Wait. Oh, I didn't really do that. Oh. That's cool. Hi, my name is Miss Hawkins. I'm the in-class support teacher at Mount Hebron. Hello, everyone. I stopped in with Mr. Taylor today to see the kids and watch what they were doing with the robots. I found it pretty cool. I started out originally in college to be a computer person and decided that I want to teach. But now after seeing this, I think I'm gonna go back and do that doctorate and get some pointers on computers so I can program some stuff. Who knows, I might even program a robot to clean my house. It is 79.988 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm trying to get it to um, go up this ramp. Make it outline one of those squares. I really think the school should get some more so everybody in the school can look at this. The Finch robots are really cool and they can teach us a lot about programming. The Finch is more fun than I thought it would be and it was a lot easier to use. So I think like everyone can use it once you get the, the hang. The Finch are just like a program that we use called Scratch. It's just applying real world yeah. techniques to it. So they're really fun to use. Awesome. Uh, I thought that was really fun. I was using Snap, which is um, like Scratch, only you can use it to program a Finch, which is a robot. And it's really fun. It's a really cool way to start learning to script. And I think it's a really cool thing to have in school, especially with um, computers being used so much in jobs nowadays. It's a really cool thing. I like it. When we originally made it, we had it set up so that it would move when we needed it to, but it wouldn't stop and you would have to do something separate to make it stop. We were able to sit down and change it and do some tweaking. So we were able to add a wait until we release the key for it to stop. Basically we can hold down the key, it'll go until, and when we want it to stop, we can release the key and it'll stop. Made controlling it easier, doing what we were doing easier, and it made showing it off a lot easier.